Hi, I'm Spencer Patrick and welcome to faithpro.org. Today I'd like to talk about uh, the difference between dating and courtship. You know, the, the society that we're all growing up in is all about dating. And dating, you know, we, we do have some cultures like India, Japan, different places that actually do this type of, uh, in, Jap in Japanese we call it omiyai, uh, which means arranged marriage. India has a lot of arranged marriage, uh, marriages as well. Interestingly, um, the divorce rate in India is much lower, despite these arranged marriages, than in Sweden, who has completely free marriage system. Get that. Hmm. It, We'll talk about that more later. But um, so, what's the difference between dating and courtship? So, dating is this idea that you go out, you spend time with uh, a girl or a guy, um, you know, whichever you are, the opposite sex. You go out with the opposite sex. You go to a movie. You go to eat food. You go to the park. You do. You go out and do stuff with people. And this is a date. But. The world's way of dating is a little bit of a dead end. I remember when I was uh, working in university, um, there was a lady at the supermarket that I was working, and she's, she was a, I think she was a high school student and I was a university student, and she didn't have a date for the prom. The prom is the, um, the big dance at the end of the, uh, the high school, the last year of high school. So she asked uh, me uh, to um, go with her, well actually no, one of the co-workers asked me to ask her to go with me, so I took her to her prom just to make her feel good. She was a sweet girl and everything, but um, after the prom, after the you know the dance and the food and all that at the high school gymnasium or wherever it was, then went back. To, I drove her back to her house and um, and took her back in, and it was really awkward because there's such pressure. Pressure. Okay, you took her on a date, so now you have to kiss her. What's the first date? All this kind of stuff. It, there's so much junk that we put ourselves through that's completely unnecessary. So dating, so what does dating do? It, it puts you together with somebody and actually it makes it quite, quite um, challenging because you, you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody trying to get to know somebody but the problem is the, the person on the other side of the table, the person on the um, sitting next to you on the uh, movie theater or whatever, I don't encourage movies anymore but there's so much junk, but um, the, the person that you're with, you're with them and they're trying to put on their best face. The lady's got all, all of her makeup, the guy's trying to impress by opening the door uh, of the car or whatever it is. And so there's, there's a lot of um, stuff that's actually not really that person. You, you're not really seeing that person. Um, and then, so a friend of mine, um, he married, an uh, American guy married a Japanese lady. After they got married, he found out that she got really angry very easily. And he said, honey, or have you always been like this? And he said, yeah. She said, yeah, but I didn't want to tell you. See, the dating process hides these things. So there's a better way that I, I believe. Um, in fact, there's books out there. Um, there's one called I, I Kiss Dating Goodbye that gives, gives some very good ideas. But um, what I'd like to encourage people to do, what I want to encourage my children to do is instead of like going out with different people and seeing if you like them, the best thing to do is get into a good church and see the people in the church because the people in the church normally, not always, not always, Devils go to church. Um, uh, they want to mess it up. Um, and people that are controlled by the enemy want go, go, try to go to church and mess up things as well. But in the church, usually you have people that are the same culture, the Christian culture. They have the same level of high standards. So it, it, when you look at the people in the church, you, and you can see how they really are, because they're surrounded naturally. They're surrounded by the natural people around them. Um, they're surrounded by people around them, and they act. you can see how they really act with and interact with people. So um, if you find your potential husband or wife at the church, I, that's highly recommended because you want to, you never marry an unbeliever. Secondly, um, see before, before you even do anything with them, see how they act with other people. And this is where I want to introduce a new concept. But actually it's not new at all. It's called courtship. Courtship is something that's not dating. Courtship is, I want to marry this man, I want to marry this woman, um, I want to marry this, op this person of the opposite sex, um, I want to marry them, it's decided. Now it's just a matter of getting to know them. And this is what an arranged marriage does, basically, in Japan, India, and a lot of the countries that have arranged marriages, is um, the families meet each other, because you know what, your mom and your dad have a better idea about that potential husband or wife than you and I would have. 
So they can give you some good advice. Sometimes they can be biased as well, so you have to pray for wisdom. James 1.5 says that if you ask for wisdom, God will give it to you. Um, so that's what we should all be doing when we're, we're meeting with people because um, courtship is, is the move towards marriage. See, when you're dating people, you date. You, you're, you're going out. Oh, then you break up. Then you're going out with somebody else. Then you break up. Man, I went through all of this type of stuff. I wasted so much time on the dating process. Complete waste of time. Um, and the other thing about um, going together, breaking up, going together, breaking up. This concept, I believe, gives people a justification in their mind for later divorce. Because going together, breaking out, well, it didn't work out. You know what? I don't know about you in your marriage, if you're married, but for me and my wife and for most every person I know that's married, there's always been a chance where you could divorce. There's always been a disagreement. There's always been something where you felt like your spouse did something that is unbelievable. I can't believe they did this. Of course, sex uh, outside of marriage is um, breaking the commitment that we make before God when we get married in our churches. Um, but um, other just stupid stuff we fight about. And, and, and we think that we can't make it. Um, and so there's so many people that I think just throw in the towel and say, okay, I'm done, we're divorced. Or they, you know, there's physical fighting, the husband or the wife hits each, you should never, husbands and wives should never hit each other, never ever touch each other um, with a, um, an aggressive, um, you know, hitting or slapping or anything like that. That we should always, our hands should be loving our spouse. But um, courtship is um, the way to go. Dating, it's shallow, you don't know what you're going to get. Courtship gives you something better. I mean, dating is hit and miss, and it also sets a, the wrong precedent. Courtship is, I want to marry that lady. What can I do to marry that lady? We'll talk to the family. After the talk to the family, um, you know, what type of arrangements would we have to do? And as you get to know them, it may fall through, but you're not living together, so you're not sinning against the Lord by having sex outside of marriage. You're not doing the breaking up and getting together, breaking up and getting together stuff, which is a huge waste of time, not only um, because of the uh, conditioning your relationships towards divorce, but also because it's hard emotionally. But also the courtship thing is is neat because people already become pre-filtered. You already know them because you grew up with that kid. You grew up with that potential husband or spouse in your church. You grew up with that person. So uh, what's the difference between dating and courtship? Dating is <clears throat> very worldly. It's the way that the world tells us to do things. Courtship is the way historically that people have done it. Let me just, in closing, tell, me, tell you about Mary. Remember Mary um, was, got pregnant and, and in Matthew uh, it says that um, Joseph was uh, a man of integrity and he was going to quietly put her away. See, once you were betrothed, this was courtship. Once you were betrothed to someone, there was no sexual activity, but it was like there had been. You're already committed to that person. So breaking it off was a big, big deal. So that's why when Joseph had to say, um, oh my goodness, this woman I'm going to marry, this girl, they say that she's like 15 or 16 years old when, when, they, got, uh, when they were betrothed. Um, this girl, she's pregnant. So he was going to quietly just get out of it because he didn't want to dishonor her, which is neat. But at the same time, um, you know, the, the angel had to appear to him and say, this is Yeshua, this is Jesus who will be born, not your son, but the child that, I, that I'm bringing into the world to save the world. So, if you look it throughout history, this idea of courtship is something that has gone along the ages. Even parents help, um, help can help you pick the right husband or wife. So, I want to encourage you, don't go with what the world says is the right way of doing, like dating, but go with what God says. Be wise. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. This is Spencer Patrick. Thank you for joining me on faithpro.org.